Well, our wizard's curtain is all full of moth holes. It doesn't take a genius to look past any of this stuff at all. And like Pop said, for us, for our generation, really, this started in the 70s. One of the big things when we were kids was we got a copy of National Geographic and Pop and I tried to find it before the show. We couldn't find it. But when we were little, it was the most exciting thing in the world. We're going to have another Ice Age. Do you remember? And there was a Tyrannosaurus Rex on the cover. Do, do you remember when we were kids? We'd have the movie day during the week or yeah. a couple times a month. Yeah. Literally for, was it third and fourth grade, we watched the little Ice Age documentaries. Yes. And then we watched some of uh, the beginnings of the ancient alien guy. Oh, Carl Sagan? No, no, no. no. The other guy who wrote, aliens. Yeah, who I know wrote the about. book. I, I don't know. His name escapes me. That's escaping me. Mr. Graham, I think his last name's Graham. Something like, um, with the little Ice Age thing, one of the other things that used to be taught in schools that's no longer taught at all, I found out, is climate epochs. The Earth goes in cycles. You had Ice Ages. You had hot periods, you had dry periods, you had wet periods, and they could see all of these epochs by looking at the layers of the earth. And you could still do that, but it's not taught anymore. Why? Because it shoots down their global warming thing. Yeah. And listen, we are on a ball of mud yes. slinging through space with a very complicated, chemically active atmosphere with all of the elements that I believe that we can detect floating around. Things are going to happen. You're going to have volcanoes go off. You're going to get hit by asteroids. We have the, uh, there's some theories out there that every so often the Earth switches its axis, which is very bad for most of the people on said planet at the time. But we the, know it shifts in degrees. Yeah, but we've been tracking the magnetic pole moving for decades. Yes. In fact, it has moved so much, you can't even use military maps from the 70s unless you have the new declination written at the bottom. 7.5 minus here, where we sit right now. It, but it's changed quite a bit. No, no, I keep track of it. Yes. Yeah. currently at minus 7.5. There you go. There you go. There's the the battle dwarf over there. <laughs> <laughs> Ser seriously i keep track of stuff like that because you never know when you're going to be uh in need of a lensatic compass yeah but here's the thing is they are literally weaponizing your fear and playing it against your ignorance to turn you into unwilling or unknowing slaves yes one of the ways they do that is everybody watching this show is probably aware of it i'm probably preaching to the choir but i'm going to say it anyway because it needs to be said they use Hollywood movies in conjunction with these studies. Uh, Scientific American, that used to be a really cool magazine. Remember, you could find all sorts of stuff in there when we were kids. Yeah. I mean, my evil genius brain right. went there quite a few times to look up new and bizarre things and to do. Now all they do is parrot current panic. Yep. Which is basically what we're talking about tonight is 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 the whole current panic scenario overall, not just today's current panic. Um, and I, I believe the military industrial complex is capitalizing oh God, yeah. off of said fear and panic. There's no question of that. There's absolutely no question that the military industrial complex is profiting off of that. For one, it's extremely lucrative. Oh, uh, when I got out, when I got wiped out by my ex-wife, before it all came down on me, I had a job at Northrop Grumman within three days of getting out because we're so hard to make. Mm -hmm. And Northrop Grumman was paying me a hundred and forty thousand dollars a year to start. Yep, that kind of money. That's the kind of money these guys throw around. I was coming right out of the army. As a tactical SIGINT specialist with some in, with some uh, staff background. It, but you and, spoke six languages, and you could write three or four handy. of them. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's handy. Uh, anyway, they were willing to pay me that kind of money right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. So the military-industrial complex is enormous and controls huge sectors of the of nations, different nations' economies by virtue of how much they consume and how much they produce. You've got to feed an army, for example. Correct. All of those food producers, Tyson and what have you, 
they've got contracts. They all have military contracts. I know I've seen some of the stuff. Uh, Kellogg Brown Root, when you were in Iraq, I know they were buying from the big producers. Well, I got actually Brown and Root to take over our chow hall because it was run by an English company. Mm -hmm. And they served me whitefish lasagna and I got them fired for it. Good. Fuck you, English. You know, your whole fucking English menu sucks. Spotted dick? No. Toad in a hole? That sounds atrocious. <laughs> eat a dick? I, no. Eat I all love, the dicks. I love I love toad in a hole. The no. Bubble and squeak? No. Big fan. Big fan of bubble and squeak. <laughs> <laughs> Bangers and mash? I'll take it. <laughs> uh, I spent some time over in England, I so I know, what, I know what all the different things that he's talking about are. Uh, spotted dick is a dessert, actually. It's a pudding with raisins. Yeah. And it, it just sounds really terrible. It sounds like uh, King Henry the Fourth's penis. Yes, it does. It does sound like the royal penis. No. The penetrating royal penis. Uh, anyway, getting back to where we're going here with the military industrial complex, war has been profitable pretty much since mankind figured out that war was profitable. Well, first of all, if you want to win, you need to have the money to outspend your enemy. Because it's at the end of the day, it's not about lives. It's about uh, wearing your enemy down, taking away his equipment, destroying his willpower, taking his heart. And yes, you know, if you take enough of the soldiers' way, they won't have enough combat power to do what they got to do. That's a true story. Funnily enough, right now, you know that I hate reading the Greeks. Oh, yeah. I've never mentioned those at I'm rereading Julius Caesar's notes on the Gallic War right now. And there's a huge section on the Germans. There's a tribe called the Suevi who learn from a Roman captive that Caesar's baggage and all of his loot is in a place. So the Germans, the Suevi are like, oh, we know that Caesar's over here with most of the legions. Let's go sack the baggage caravan. And it is, of course, a trap. And yeah. Their greed lures them right in and they get their asses handed to them. And it's fascinating, fascinating reading, but it goes exactly to what Pop's talking about. You've got to have the resources. And if you have enough resources, you can then even lure your enemy with those resources, which mm -hmm. is to his gave a new example of that. Death. Yes. And they'll do it. They'll do it almost every time. Mm -hmm. Almost every time. If they think they can get away with it they'll do it or you get particularly bad examples of we have a whole lot of loot and a whole lot of weapons let's build a maginot line oh yeah and then the germans That's stupid. just walk through belgium they just outmaneuver you yeah <laughs> so you can't be stupid and have a lot of loot that doesn't help you can be smart and not have a lot of loot but you can't be stupid and have no loot or a lot of loot those combinations do not work um one of the things the military industrial complex did learn, and yes, it is them, because you see a lot of the funding come out of, well, DARPA, who gets their funding from your own federal government, from the State Department, which is a great deal of fun. Yep. Uh, I've been involved in a couple of DARPA projects. All of the AI shit that's going on right now, I worked on one of the first auto data miners back in 2001, I think it was. I can't go into detail. But we worked on an overseas project that was basically a rudimentary AI that combed through hundreds of data feeds mm -hmm. that you could access information from like this. And it revolutionized reporting in that area. Well, when I, uh, before, before spamming was made illegal, I used to run a spamming business out of my basement. You're a dick. And I uh, you're, actually you're used to have some of those computers. That would sniff out, you know, um, email addresses and what that have you. That technology came from what I was doing. Yes, but I, I know exactly what you're talking about because yeah. I used it. Yeah. Of course, it was nefarious purposes, but I'm an evil genius. <laughs> so that's, what we do. <laughs> that's fine. These things are going to happen. Anyway, the military industrial complex rapidly learned that they could get into the education game and create the children that they needed in order to have the adults to feed their machine and as rough as it is um and i spent 11 years pop spent 33 he and i both served with integrity firmly believing in what we were doing we did i know i know i did i, I did. won't speak for you he did too there he said it too 
a lot of the patriotic stuff that we saw uh, was designed to create us. That stuff was basically designed to create us. And that's a hard pill to swallow. Let me tell you. Yeah. Sitting here, having done what I did, believing what I believed, now knowing that much of what I consumed to get to that point was bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Pure bovine manure. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's a hard pill to swallow. It is. It is. Very, very tough pill to swallow. And here's the funny thing. If shit got really bad and I get called back into the service, I would still honor my oath to the best of my ability, depending upon, you know, how I felt about the uh, people above me. If I think that they're totally off the reservation, then, you know, I probably would just show up and sit down and be completely useless. But I would still show up. Dude, we were, we were NCOs. We know how to yeah really mess things up. If I know how to. to. <laughs> yeah, I know how to play the system. And actually, I need to do the administrative violence military edition because there's a lot of guys out there who are lost in the sauce and they need to know how to defend themselves from the big weenie. Yeah, yeah. You know the classic shell game that the street hustlers. You can do that with Connexes. Yes, I've seen that done with Connexes. It's very unpleasant. <laughs> That's another story. That was that was the result of a stupid lieutenant. He got a bunch of uh, shipping manifests backwards, and the connexes came in in the wrong order, order or sequence or something. And when they opened them up, everything was not there, but it was there. But it was just over there. No, I, I knew I, that I, it was over there. You get the idea. I have seen the nightmare connex being opened. Yeah, my old company commander Donahue, first lieutenant, he's got his clipboard. Uh, break the band. And we open up, and this wave of furniture and paper and other office supplies <laughs> floods out in the parking lot. He literally is like, writes at the top, I'm fucked, signs it, and then just walks <laughs> off. <laughs> That's beautiful. And I'm like, wait, what, sir, where are you going? Beautiful. He's just like, I'm done. He lights a cigarette. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I guess we got to unfuck this. All right, you, you, let's get through this and see what's going on. Oh, the guys next to us got two connexes of BII. Ooh. That's all good the, trading. The, you can trade that shit. You can trade that, though. At least you can trade that. There's nothing you can do with the furniture. And no, no. Uh, a BII for the uninitiated is basically like shovels and axes and stuff. That you, you have a bundle that is that goes with vehicles mm-hmm. uh, to unfuck your situation should you get stuck somehow or any number of other reasons. But a conix full of that is not for fighting wars. No. It's not much good. No, that was that was a fuck you conix, I believe. Yeah. That was strictly fuck you and we're fucking you. And yeah. here's the uh, sheet of stuff that you don't have in there that you're going to have to pay for. That's I right. covered him on that one, though. When he got out of command, I took care of him. Did you find the, the conix, though? No. No. See, we found ours. They were just, it had been shuffleboarded. The Butler building, where it was all supposed to be stored, yeah. had an unsecured door. Oh, and you know if the building's unsecure, you really yeah. can't go after people for stuff that's missing. Mm. So things happen. I don't know. Evil hairless monkey stuff. Who who knows? Wow. But you know, I got him. He was supposed to have one hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars of liability. It went down to twenty-three hundred. See, one of our systems can cost three million. Yes. Some of the stuff that we worked with. But, you know, like literally, he, he called me up. He goes, I'm fucked, man. I, this is the end of my career. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely yeah. nightmare fuel. And scan me scan me the hand receipt. I'm like, mm-hmm. This is bad. There's a whole pallets of computer shit. Never showed up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you're royally fucked, sir. Let's see what I can do for you. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, let's move on. We're moving on. We're moving Too on. Too much Too army much. stories. We got <laughs> straight down the rabbit hole. Uh. Okay, so in the 70s, it was global cooling. They were really telling us all we were going to have an ice age. And when we were little kids, we yeah. thought that was great. We, no, that, they're like, was, by 1990, yeah, it's right. never going to go above 55 degrees. Yeah, ever again. Yeah, I'm like, it's, yeah. We're all like, what the fuck are you talking about? No, I thought that was great. I loved winter. I'm that kid. I, I, it didn't really bother me. I just remember it happening and them telling me that. Mm-hmm. And then later on, it was global warming. And I'm like, in the 80s, so that like, happened a minute. In 1991, Al Gore released his book about how 
we were all going to die and the glaciers were all going to melt. And uh, all of the glaciers were supposed to have melted by 2000. Yes. And then it was 2011 and so on and so forth. The pattern of gaslighting is pretty damn obvious. With it's strong with this one. Um, Thompson Peterson of the National Climactic Data Center surveyed dozens of peer-reviewed scientific articles from 1965 to 1979 and found that only 7% 7 supported global cooling, or only 7 articles supported global cooling, while 44 predicted warming. Now, here's the thing. Peterson says 20 were neutral in their assessments of climate change. What started to really happen around 1979 and culminated in 1992 when the Berlin Wall came down. Well, there was Afghanistan. Worldly, bigger scope, bigger scope here, larger, huge tracts of land. <laughs> tracts, I don't know. I was, Soviet fell. Well, okay. That started with their war in 1979 when they just burned through a tremendous amount of assets in a country that eats armies. That would be Afghanistan. That would be Afghanistan. Did, Alexander the Great, 369. We fall into that trap as well? Same trap. Yeah, same trap. Here Afghanistan we. is a nation eater. It even got to Alexander the Great to an extent. Correct. He literally thought it was such a fucking shitty place. He just marched on right through to get to India. Correct. That is correct. And Homer wrote, don't bother with Afghanistan. There's it, nothing here. Yes. It's, Homer, it, Homer was his scribe at the time. Yeah, it, it was a shit show way back in the day. That's correct. So the Soviet Union comes apart at the seams officially by 1992. Now that's when global warming started. Here's a thing that a lot of people don't know. Yeah, we've got listening stations everywhere. We've got them. The Soviets had them. We had them on our subs. They had them on their subs. The sub wars from the 70s and 80s are... Uh, if you ever read you any of those unclassified those, reports... That's the wow, that's, a, that's some good reading. Playing chicken 800 feet under the sea... In a hundred and forty foot long torpedo, with tor armed with torpedoes, armed with torpedoes and, and nuclear, nuclear missiles. missiles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't plan that, by the way. No. That just happened. Sorry. Um. Anyway, fascinating reading. One of the other things that we and the Soviets both had, and a lot of nations had, but the Soviets had the most, were weather stations. Mm -hmm. And the Soviets had those weather stations all up around the Arctic, and a lot of them in the Antarctic, wherever they could get them. Many, many of their weather stations were in cold weather areas. So it's true. Mm -hmm. they, they, they have that huge swath of Siberia and the Arctic up there. Yeah, yeah. Tons of weather stations in there. All of those all reported. They reported that data. They didn't care. It's just weather. Mm -hmm. So universities would gather that data. And we got that was the very beginning of real weather reporting. Global temperatures weren't seriously reported until around the 1960s. So when they say it's the coldest winter in 200 years, you're fucking lying. Yeah. Because you're reading the old farmer's almanac, going back and look at the record. The guy says it was this temperature there. Okay, that's that's fair and I'll accept that. But overall, globally, get, get out of here. That didn't even start until the 1960s. Correct. 92. When, when did the hole in the ozone? I started hearing about that in the 80s. That was late 70s and it was hairspray causing that. Aquanet superhold caused the ozone to and refrigeration. Yes, chemicals. and refrigeration. They've been going after refrigerators for a while. They're going after refrigerators again right now. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not going after Aquanet superhold right now because hair metal is out. <laughs> I would really like some good Def Leppard and Quiet Riot to replace the garbage that's out there right now. Correct. Side the track. Soviet weather stations in all of those areas went silent. So immediately... All of the weather data went average, average, went, average. Whoa, look how warm it is. Went, and they're capitalizing on that. Correct. This is where the global warming scare comes from. And Tons why why are they data. capitalizing yeah. on that? Because they can scare you. Yes. Channel you and milk you for all you're worth. Yes. And they have even been caught putting temperature sensors now that all of those Soviet ones are down. They'll put them in the middle of... The Bronx in New York, where the sun has got like X number of hours of just baking all of that concrete and asphalt. Mm -hmm. And they'll put it on airfields where it's still black tarmac airfields. And that's going to cause the temperature to skyrocket where that sensor is. And they put it close to the ground instead of up where it's supposed to be to get the actual temperature. 
I mean, if you look at the cycles, yeah. we're technically supposed to be in an ice age right now, and we're not. We're supposed to be. Uh, I'd have to go back and look. Yeah, I, I didn't. Mean, we could we could do a climate ep- epoch episode. We could do a sciency episode. Ooh, science. We are not scientists. We're not, but we could we do really it are. for comedy's sake. <laughs> but for comedy's sake, we can do this. Uh. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonculus.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the meat case box.